are right, very common in uh, web apps today is that we have multiple JavaScript files. So, so far we've been working in one script file and that's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that, but there are certain benefits to splitting up your code base into multiple files. And we'll see more of this in the second big project, remote dev project. But I quickly want to introduce you to the concept of importing and exporting uh, things from separate JavaScript files. So currently we have this script file, right? But let's say we want to import a function from another file that right? maybe we have some kind of utilities file utilities so utilities usually if you have some kind of common functionality that you need to do usually you would have a separate function for that um, and you would put it in the utilities file or helpers file for example maybe a very common thing you have to do in your application is convert right so it would it would maybe take in a usd amount and maybe it does some operation right we'll just multiply by 0.9 to return euro account return uh, euro euros right just an example here so this is a very common thing you you may want to do in your application so instead of constantly re repeating yourself all over the place you would put it in a utilities file with all sorts of other utilities that you also commonly need to do but now of course you want to use it in your normal script file or normal uh, logic file so how do we get access to this function here so you can export a function so we can say export right and something else that we may want to put in here as well is for example if we make a lot of network requests to a server you need an address right so maybe you have some kind of base uh, api url it's often written in capital case and maybe that's some kind of dot com slash api right so you don't have so you don't have to keep repeating this part of the url and let's say we want to use that somewhere as well so we need to export it right so you can write export in front of it and then well you can already guess we can import that here so if i want to import that function for example convert currency i have to use uh these curly braces and i can say import convert currency from and then it needs to specify the file path so it's in the same folder so i have to use dot forward slash and then it's utilities.js and then i can use it here right if i also want the base api url i would have to write base api i can just write it like this right so you can have a lot of imports here from this one file right that's how import and export works essentially in javascript there's one other thing you may want to know is you can also have a default export from a file right so here i have to use the curly braces if i for example i don't export it like this but i say export default convert currency i'm exporting this convert currency function as the default from this file then i can just uh write it like this so i don't have to use the curly braces i actually can name it whatever i want i can even name it blah blah because it's con this is the default export. It can only be one default export. So whatever is the default will be stored in this name I specify here. But it makes more sense to also call it convert currency. Right. And then I can just use it. Right. I can pass some number. Right. That will be the USD amount. And I will get back the euro amount. That's how that would work. Right. Now to make this work in the browser, there's one other thing we have to do. If you're not using a bundler, we'll talk more about what that means. You do have to make this script file a type is module right so to make this work natively in the browser without any bundler like webpack or parcel you do have to do this if you're using webpack or parcel or one of those bundlers you don't have to do this we're not using that here yet so we have to use this to make it work right and now also if i want to import this base api url i can write a comma here and i can write um the curly braces again right so base api url and then i could also use that right? i can use it uh, often it's it's used with fetch right so then if we want to fetch some data i have some url i want to start off with the base api url right because that's forward slash api and then after that maybe the particular resource like books and then maybe the book with number with id4 right? but then at least i have this api url which is going to be the same for all api or network requests so I'm, i might as well just ab abstract it out into its own constant in the utilities file so this is this would be a simple example right so this import export stuff is called es modules right we also have uh, require so maybe you've seen that before so instead of uh, oh, let's actually do export first so instead of export exports the module right? and then you would uh, export it like this you would specify the convert current this is all this is uh, common js syntax this is how you would export it and then to import it you would use require right so this is something you'll see in node.js still for example right so this is a bit old school it's called common js it's it works similar similarly you still see it in node.js but on the front end these days we use import and export syntax so this is es modules
By the way, if this was helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. Also, check out my courses on CSS and JavaScript if you want to take those skills to an advanced level. Because in there, we will build some beautiful real-world projects from scratch so you can see how everything fits together and really master CSS or JavaScript. And I will also release other courses soon like React and Node.js. So if you want to be notified, then make sure you are subscribed to the email newsletter. You can find the link in the description. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon.